Hello everyone and welcome to JFG tonight. How are you doing people of the regular chat? I wanted to talk about the unheard piece about Lauren Sutter and Lauren Sutter just blocked me today. After being a follower of mine on Twitter for eight years, we never exchanged DM except one time if I remember. Uh, at one time she said she was retiring from the public eye and back then I was doing the public space. And I said, hey, Lauren, uh, good luck with your undertakings. No matter what it is, I hope you're happy. And if you ever come back to the internet, uh, let me know. We can do an interview. That was all I exchanged with her back then. Other than this, I don't remember other contacts. Uh, Hermit M says, did you offer her babies, JF? I didn't. I didn't. Lauren Saturn. Well, I didn't know she was dating, you know, she was so low on the dating market that she was willing to date uh, statist intelligence agents, Filipinos, uh, half black uh, intelligence agents. Had I known, I, I would have known, my God, I have a chance. Everyone can, uh, everyone has a chance uh, then. No, so I want to talk about, she, she's going the route of Caleb. You know Caleb, uh, this uh, this guy who said I've been I've been uh, driven down the alt right pipeline. I have been uh, brought against my will by the YouTube algorithm into right wing extremism. She isn't doing as bad as Caleb, but she's doing the same kind of piece on unheard. Uh, you know, being interviewed and saying, oh. You know, it's all not all rosy in the right wing. The right wing circles can be quite rough. And here I had a bad experience. My problem with this, it's the same problem I expressed many months ago, um, which is this has nothing to do with the right wing. First, to establish whether you even have, and call it right wing or red pill community, to establish whether you've had a bad experience in the red pill trad sphere, first you must establish that you've done an actual attempt at trad life. And that has not happened with Lauren Sutton. Lauren Sutton committed many mistakes and we see them through this article and I want to read it with you guys because so much of it is evocative of my exes. I can see them making the false inventions, making the, the same shortcuts. And ultimately, the, one of the errors of Lauren Sutton is she tried behaving kind of trad with a guy who wasn't interested in this at all. She chose a cosmopolitan intelligence agent from Australia, uh, wasn't looking for that from her. So he expected her to be part of the machine, the leftist machine. In fact, he found a job for her within the intelligence agency he was working with. So don't come and tell me, I tried trad life, it didn't work. If your husband was looking for jobs for you within the state apparatus, that is not a trad husband. Your husband is from another race, another country, Somehow you, you went around the world to get to this guy. And oh, maybe, maybe he's not perfect, okay? I'm not going to do the defense of uh, this guy today because I don't know. But what I know is that when women, they, they claim abuse and they can't point to an actual action that was committed and it all falls back on them. Like a woman will tell you, I've been abused, I've been abused. I was outside crying. I couldn't get in the house. That is exactly what a woman says when she doesn't want to admit that there were no acts of abuse. It's like, okay, well, you were outside. You were screaming. You were knocking on the door to try to enter with your baby. I've seen this before. I've seen it many times. Uh, I've told you guys the story of the octopus woman. I mean, like... You just put them outside of your apartment for physical safety for them, like uh, because they're hitting the walls and they're going insane and they're violent. You just put them outside of your apartments and they start banging and destroying stuff. Um, if you were there screaming and crying, I want, I'm not going to find 
that you were abused until you explain to me why you were screaming and crying until you show me this guy has made actions that were really bad against you. Uh, this is what comes out of the piece, which is it's all her. It's her. She, she presents herself as needing to leave her husband for a couple of weeks to go back to her country, Canada, because someone in her family died. And he, he refused that. Now, here's the problem. If you live with a young child to Canada, and I'm a Filipino uh, half black in Australia, I expect that this is divorce. Uh, the problem is if you live with a young child within the current context of divorce law, if you say, I need to go to Canada for a couple of weeks, don't worry, we'll get back together. I know that there is a very, very high chance, close to certainty, that you're going to kidnap the child. And so he rejects this. She goes to be a white trash. Uh, we'll, we'll, get through, <laughs> we'll get through the whole story, but <clears throat> she goes during these weeks to be a white trash in a white trailer park home, uh, a la m, &M you know, uh, uh, with her kid. So she's there with her partly brown kid, a beautiful white female uh, living in a trailer. And she says, but I did call back my husband. You know, I did give him a chance. I said, hey, I can come back to Australia. I want us to go back together. But he stick to his, uh, to his, uh, belief. she says, she says that he stick to his belief that uh, it wasn't working between them. She had violated some of his principles, including refusing to do something with her life by taking his job. and. Uh, and refusing to stay in Australia with him. Now, <clears throat> um, I don't defend the, the entirety of these actions if they are true, but we only get one side of the story, see? And from that side of the story, I would expect certain boxes to be checked if I'm going to find that this guy is an abuser. And I don't see them checked. I see them as, okay, well, you married a guy that you didn't have any contractual arrangement with as it, as it relates to whether he wanted you to give him all this. Like you say you, you, you were making food for him. Okay, but you picked a leftist. You picked a guy who uh, making food for him is worth nothing because for him, the realization of you is as a free woman and you need to go to work and you need to get a job in his whatever state apparatus intelligence agency and if you don't get that, you're not a good leftist woman. So you delivered right-wing trad life to a man who hadn't asked for it. And in fact, what told you all of the opposite. He wanted you to be something else than you were. Uh, let me tell you, if, if you had an actual arrangement with a husband who expect you to do the sacrifice of being a stay-at-home mom, uh, I would expect him to glorify you and love you and respect you. But this failure, is it proper to attribute it to the trad lifestyle? No. And yet that's what the unheard piece does. It is not a failure of the trad lifestyle. It is not a failure even of right-wing circles. It's a failure of woman choice. And this is the problem where this article presents the whole red pill view is debunked by this story. Like This whole story is so contradictory with the red pill view. No, this story is exactly what we've been saying for years. Women make horrible decisions, okay? Lauren Southern would have been better off if she had been, uh, she had been paired with a guy by her great uncle, okay? Uh, she, would have, she, she would have basically had a better case. She would have had uh, a husband who was loving, more loving than this guy, she could have had a chance of having a husband who respects her sacrifice as a stay-at-home mom. Don't put this on the back of right-wing values. Now, Lauren tries to, you know, in the interview, she tries to, to do exactly this, to say, oh, well, you know, it's not necessarily indicative of right-wing failures, but, and then the whole article is the but. When you, when you do such a large but, I will... I will judge you on the butt, not on the thing you said before to kind of as a caveat.
Uh, let's talk about the Honor Earth article. Online thread life ideology has distilled a version of social conservatism that's both rigid and widely oversimplified and which can pose grave risks for women. I interviewed Lauren Sutton for Unheard, and look at this, Lauren Sutton blocked me. And so it broke my heart because she was a follower of my Twitter account. And I have a policy that when you block me, I block you so that you're affecting my algorithm in, in, the, in a mirror way. You are also affecting your algorithm. It broke my heart here to follow my policy. So basically, uh, you have these right-wing figures. They've never truly been into the right wing. They don't have right-wing moral pillars. They, they've made a career. They surfed on a wave. And you had a lot of them in 2017, 2018. And they get tired of it. They grow old. They don't have the cognition they used to have. Or worse, they are women. <clears throat> and they've always had it in their heart to be leftist. And this creates a phenomenon where they, they have to exaggerate their valor as kind of representative of the right. And so, so they have to kind of do some degree of bullshit. And there is some bullshit here to, to begin with, just with the tweet. Uh, the main contribution of Lauren Sutton has never been trad life ideology. Lauren Sutton is someone who intervened within the core of the alt light, arguably the biggest alt light personality of 2017 to 2020. And within the alt light, she has mostly been interested at the question of immigration. Trad life was a side subject for uh, Lauren Sutton. It has never been her main subject. She has made some comments about marriage and religion at times. <clears throat> but Lauren Sutton, first and foremost, was the alt-light alt wing of quasi-racism. That is what we will remember her for. So to begin with, oh, a to begin with this concept that a trad life advocate has found out that the trad life isn't as good as, it, as, as they thought is already a false premise. First and foremost, Lauren Sutton was uh, feeding into quasi-racism, into, uh, I can't quite say it, but I'm against immigration and... We, and talking about the demographic realities of Western civilization. That is what she's been talking about. And so the first question to know if we have a story that qualifies as an influencer discovering against their theory would be to ask, did Lauren Sutton follow her quasi-racist principles in real life? Did she actually... Uh, did she actually enact in her personal life the quasi-racist uh, talking points that she was putting forward in 2017-2020? And the answer is no. Lauren Southern's main coverage point was immigration threatens our nations. Demographic change threaten our nations. And the first thing she did in her dating life is to go date a half-black, jungle-Asian Australian. On top of it, an agent of the state, just in case you thought of her as a right-winger or in search of some sort of liberty. So basically, Lauren Sutton has done in her private... And she has done so through immigration. She had to immigrate to Australia for a while to get inseminated by this racially diverse intelligence agent, and then came back to Canada a single mom against the wishes of this man. So basically ripping away a child from their father to come back to a network of support. Now that is very leftist, that is very feminist, that is very non-trad, and that is not even in line with just the 
quasi-racist coverage of Lauren Sutton in the past. So don't come and say, I'm going to write an article about how this influencer totally regrets her decisions and what she's pushed because she's done nothing of what she advocated for. In fact, she went totally the other way. Uh, Rodila said, says, and now Canada has to pay for the kid. Well, um, I guess, but at the same time, it's not going to be a costly kid. He lives in a trailer park. Does promo thing, so she starts with, oh yeah, you know, I'm a woman and I've been disliking the right representation of women, but also the left representation of women. So Unheard always has this type of centrist coverage, which is like, oh yeah, you know, the extreme realities on both sides are so extreme. Oh my God, all oh, the truth is in the middle. So she goes with a long introduction about this. Let's skip over it. And then she makes the whole stolen valor paragraph defending the whole idea that Saturn is a Nantan's right-wing figure. Saturn was perhaps the most telegenic figure in the brash, young, and very online alt-right movement, which emerged in the 2010s, quickly gaining international notoriety for her views on mass immigration, Islam, racially motivated farm murders in South Africa, and the supposed harms of liberal feminism. See, see in this list, Lauren Sutton has no valor in the domain of thread life advocacy. Lauren Sutton is not one of these red pill dating YouTubers. She's never been. Content that saw her accused by the radical left-wing Sutton Poverty Law Center of racist dog whistling and even hovering at the precipice of outright white nationalism. Sutton herself has always denied this, but that hasn't stopped her critiques. So validity to her criticism. <clears throat> and then abruptly in 2019, so she goes to Australia. She abruptly leaves her online life. Now that is the moment at which I wrote a DM to her because I was uh, quite known and she had come back then on Warski Live. I had crossed her there, but I hadn't said much. Um, <clears throat> and now she goes for a trad life. But she's never been advocating for a trad life. She doesn't know the ins and outs of red pill discourse. Here's what red pill discourse is. One, women make terrible decisions. Two, the traditional world, uh, as put in one form or another, whether you go to Canada or India, they all have found ways to circumvent female decision-making traditionally through arranged marriage in India, through marriage in, uh, in Western civilization. And the idea is that females have been unleashed through female liberation starting maybe around 1945 or 1960 or 70, wherever you want to put the mark where this started. Females have been unleashed to uh, revert to their natural decision-making patterns, which if let free for too many generations, will cause a African-style polygamous nation to emerge in no time where there used to be a socially arranged marriage one. In other words, unleashing female liberty onto a nation is a guarantee to totally fail it into the ground. I would say that's a fair representation of the red pill discourse. The red pill discourse doesn't tell you, go pick a random Australian and you're going to be happy. The red pill discourse doesn't tell you, Take a leftist and deliver sandwiches for him and you're, you're going to turn him into a right winger and he's going to love you for being a stay at home mom. The red pill discourse is, is foundational around marriage being a contract. So you cannot contract with a leftist that you're going to be a stay at home mom, even if he doesn't like it, which is what Lauren Southern has done. She went against the wishes, the expressed wishes of her husband. And she said, oh, yeah, I know you don't want me to be a stay-at-home mom, but I'm still going to be. Now, 
if she had done this with someone who's at the border, maybe she would have moved them. But it is no guarantee of the red pill that you're going to move a man like this. What you have to do, Lauren, as, as someone who, who sees a man like this, you have to reject him. You have to say, oh, okay, so you want me to be a working mom. You're all up, uh, you're, you're all about me starting to work with you at the intelligence agency of Australia. That's not what I want. I want to be a stay at home mom. So therefore, bye bye. And therefore, I'm not going to take the plane. I'm not going to be inseminated. I'm going to, to go for the random next guy. And given that you're Lauren Sutton with your great beauty, <clears throat> basically any guy, any guy you can find and you should have found a guy that was willing to honor your sacrifice. You didn't do this. But that's not a problem of the red pill. That's a problem of your decision making. Silver Spider says, Pearly Things is the next Lauren Sutton. Seems to be the evolution of these types. Talk all this right-wing stuff, but in reality making the country more African. It's exactly what's going to happen with, uh, with just Pearly Things, which is why I have put on the record my offer for sperm to just pearly things. I didn't want her to accept it. I wanted it, I want, I wanted it there to be a tweet that shows you could have had a baby there. I offered uh, insemination. There would be continued insemination until we get a baby. The baby would have been born in June, which is basically in two months from now. And what did she do? She rejected the offer. Ha 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 intimidated by JF. No, I don't think so. Well, uh, I look forward to dunking on Just Pearly Things when she's 80 years old. I'm going to go dunk on her on her show. And I'm going to say, look, you're childless. No one loves you. You suck. And you could it could have gone different. Well, in any case, I didn't want it to go different because Just Pearly Things is kind of okay physically, but not as beautiful as my current girlfriend. So not a problem that she says no for me, but it's a problem that she's out there childless. I'm going to dunk on her. Dino Rogovic sends a super chat. He says, JF, off topic, but I listened to your show yesterday about CSS and coding. I am learning the Python code and I've made great gains this week. I am manipulating spreadsheets, data sets, and it is very exciting and enjoyable. Well, I'm happy for you. It's always great to be manipulating productively because, you know, you can try Excel by clicking and making little formulas, but at some point you reach a point where you want to process massive amounts of data and then you need a programming language. Let me tell you, Python, I never got around to caring about it uh, because at this point, JavaScript is so developed that I, I can do a program in JavaScript. Like if you were to tell me, Jeff, I have those spreadsheets, uh, I want to interpret the data in them, I would go straight Node.js. Now, I know that Node.js is made for the web, but Node.js can do anything. You can run it on a server. And literally, when I do have a mathematical analysis to do, I do it through Node.js uh, because at this point, the language has developed so much with so many libraries. It's like, why well, have this Python, this bizarre language out there? I, I'm, I just don't like it. Um, so she's not alone, Lauren Sutton. There's many other women who are suffering in unhappy trad life marriages. Well, first, I would like to know I would like to know how trad these marriages are, and second, trad life or social conservatism is not a guarantee for happiness. It's just a belief that this is the right way to organize a relationship. Now, it won't make you happy in and of itself. You need to derive your own happiness from knowing that you will be contributing to making babies and raising the next generation. If you don't have happiness from the fact that you're engaged in the right thing, <clears throat> the format of the couple itself will not 
it will not make you happy. You need to you need to be convinced that you are accomplishing your purpose when you do this. And then it's not a question of your happiness, by the way, uh, because actual subjective level of happiness, um, you can ask it to parents, they will say that they're unhappy, but they are deeply subscribing to their choices and they stick with it. And they know it's important what they do. They may be tired, exhausted, and even report being unhappy. But if you ask them if they would redo it, and if you look at their behavior, you see that they invest a lot in their current life and that they are proud of what they're doing to the next generation. Master Slave says, Python is the way to go. Do not listen to JF on the topic of programming languages. Uh, look, I'm not saying that I'm an authority that you should listen to me. I'm saying I'm not going to learn Python because I don't know anything that would require Python and that I cannot accomplish with something else. I love MATLAB. I, I loved PHP back in the days. And now I love JavaScript. I never thought I would love JavaScript, let me tell you, because back in Papa JF's days, JavaScript was this little block stuck in some HTML substructure. And I was like, what is this thing doing? How does this fucking work? But now JavaScript with Node.js, React, Vite, JavaScript is a different beast. And if you want to convince me that you're right, show me something that I couldn't do, that you can do with Python that I cannot do with Node. I take any challenge. <clears throat> so uh, the article presents everything in the red pill sphere as once complex theories are swiftly distilled to their bare essentials. And, and Lauren Sutton explains her strategy. Follow the listicle and you'll be fine. By the time she met her husband, she had been condensing conservative values into listicle form as a media influencer for some years. So basically, she, this is what these half-wit uh, contributors to the public space do. They don't think for themselves. They distill into what she calls listicle. So basically, a good-looking uh, summary version of other people's views. So she is kind of acknowledging there that she is a superficial talking figure, that this has always been her MO. Um, <clears throat> so she goes to Australia. Uh, I had this del delusional view of relationships that only women could be the ones that make or break them, and men can do no wrong. So she didn't spot the red flags even as they grew more extreme. He would lock me out of the house. I remember having to knock on the neighbor's door on rainy nights because he'd get upset and drive off without unlocking the house. It was very, str very strange to go from being this public figure on stage with people clapping to the girl crying, knocking on someone's door with no home to get into, being abandoned with a baby. Now, this would be one of the acts of abuse that she has to attribute to him. So you were locked out of a house. My problem here is that there are many times, many times I had to protect myself against aggressive women by locking myself in or locking myself out of a house. Uh, there are various reasons why he may have legitimately done this. What have you done to him? Have you been arresting him? Have you been stopping him from sleeping? Because when a man works and he has to get to work tomorrow and there you are making your female crises and extending them into 2, 3, 4 a.m. into the night, you can actually disrupt a man's life to the point where he loses his job. So I'd like to know the other side of this story. She says she got locked out. She, she, you certainly haven't gotten locked out randomly. I'm sure, I'm sure if you were all loving and all good and all normal with him, he wouldn't lock you out. 
you lock a woman out because she is causing more problem inside than she would if she is outside. What was the problem that led him to lock you out? Another reason you want to lock out women sometime is that sometimes you can know that they are planning for a divorce strategy. And you can think that there is a possibility that they will siege the house, not allowing you back in if you let them grab the house. And so sometimes when a woman indicates threats or makes threats of divorce, the only strategy is you have to lock inside in, into the house because if she calls the police, she can get you out of your own house. And now it's her house. And now she goes into a, uh, into a court case, in f an ex parte case, and she can claim your property that way. Uh, ultimately, it might end up being your property or being shared property. But she can take ownership of it for years before you see it back. So I'd like to know what kind of threats has Lauren done, what kind of disruption to this man's life that he would put her outside. There are cases where you are absolutely justified in protecting yourself against a histrionic mother who may be threatening you, who may be planning some aggression against you. A silver Spider sends a super chat. He says, hey, Jeff, my coworker was telling me he feels bad for these leftists protesting at colleges because they are programming, have no future, and want to see things burn. It made me think, if these people had future opportunities, would they still fly the LGBT slash other flags and follow all the programming? <clears throat> uh, I think that there is an opposition between these two ideas, that there is on the one hand opportunities, and there is on the, one, the other an equality. And the reason you end up in an equality movement is you fund, fundamentally believe that there is no way for you to get on top of others. You, you think that you are a loser. Now, when you think that you're a loser, if everyone could equalize, then that gets you up. If you think that you're a winner of a system, then equalization brings you down. Uh, so I do believe that there is an inverse relationship and that the more you create opportunities in the capitalist, success-based meritocracy, the least LGBT activism you would have. Uh, I believe so, yes. And Ujuri, and Ujuri says, hey, Jeff, random question, but do, do you believe modern dentistry is legitimate in general, worth seeing a dentist a couple of times a year? Let me tell you, my belief at this point, and I, <clears throat> I will not back it with scientific evidence. Just my personal takeaway from the whole dentistry thing. There is dentistry repair, which is legitimate. I believe that if you have a cavity, go repair it. It's more comfortable. You, you will live a more pleasant life, and it won't get worse. Uh, so I believe that repairs are totally legitimate. Crowns, bridges, at a certain point of destruction of your mouth, they are legitimate strategies to be able to chew naturally and enjoy <clears throat> having a clean mouth and clean looking also for aesthetics. But dentistry, the cleaning business, and the whole idea that you have to go there every six months is a gigantic scam in my view. They totally wrecked my teeth, by the way, last time, because they changed, their they changed their method. It used to be a brush, and the brush wouldn't hurt you. So this brush was just brushing fluoride over your teeth, and it's like, was it necessary? No, you can brush your own uh, teeth. But the new method that they have is a water jet. And let me tell you, they totally wrecked my whole mouth. And it took me eight months. Like, I, I, I think I'm just starting to be recovering from it because they, they induce pain in all my teeth. They have stripped away so much of the crap around my teeth that at this point, like, they, they bared my teeth to close to the roots. The fact is there is a natural buildup of stuff around your teeth that 
can be removed, but you you might not want to remove it. Um, and the water jet technique goes way too uh, too harsh. And uh, it, I, I have I have rebuilt the the layer of protection around my teeth using sensodine every day, three times a day. I'm just reapplying sensodine, sensodine, and when I was young, one shot of sensodine would eliminate any pain for months and months and months because they have these little molecules, they attach to your teeth and they protect them. But since I got this air jet, this water jet technique done on me, <clears throat> I had to reapply sensodine for eight months and I'm just starting not to feel pain anymore. So fuck the whole cleaning business. They don't know what they're doing. Yeah, a new guy says sensodine actually works. Oh, it does. I mean, if you've ever felt a teeth pain, you will know that it does. Uh, it actually does work, yes. So overall, I like the dentist as you go there when you have a problem. And you get the dentist to fix your problem. And fuck this whole discourse around, well, if you don't come every six months, you're going to have more cavities. Well, fuck it. Uh, I, I don't care if I have more cavities. I will go at this point to the dentist when I'm disrupted. When I feel, oh, there, there's a little uh, teeth here that needs polishing. Maybe I feel a little crack in this one. Maybe I feel a little pain in this one. And that I, I need that basically every three or four years, not every six months. Anyways, uh, like... Debunk this unheard. Debunk this. This is the red pill on the on the, on dentistry. Explain to me how I'm wrong instead of making this whole right wing case around Lawrence Sutton. Um, <clears throat> see, that is another act of abuse. So we we've resolved the first act of abuse. There are legitimate reasons to put a woman outside the home and. I, I cannot judge if this guy has acted legitimately because I know that women will never report their initiation of a conflict. Never. They never do. Women will always come with, oh, out of nowhere, this guy put her out of the house. I know as a man that this doesn't happen, especially not a beautiful female. I mean, an ugly female, it's like maybe, you, maybe your threshold of endurance is low. But a beautiful female, you keep her inside the home. Worst case scenario, she, she's going to fall on your dick accidentally and you're going to get another baby. So if she was put outside of the home, is that she has caused some disruption. I would like to know what it is before I judge. Second act of abuse. I was told daily that I was worthless, pathetic, dead weight. Now, that is certainly not good husband behavior. If your wife has sacrificed <clears throat> her career for you, she has sacrificed her body to host your baby, you cannot call her worthless, pathetic, dead weight. But why is he calling her that? He's calling her that because she doesn't go to the work that he found for her because she want to be a stay-at-home mom. But then you, you, you boil down to the beginning of their relationship. And it's like he had told her that he didn't want her to be a stay-at-home mom. He wanted her to be a leftist, liberalized woman working. So he's calling her dead weight because she's not doing what she had committed to do, which is your, your marriage is based on the assumption that you're going to bring money to the family. It's certainly not the kind of marriage I advocate for. Uh, I wouldn't put that expectation, especially not on a woman who graces you with, uh, you know, care for the kids and quality parenting and, and even make sandwiches for you. It's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm happy with this. But this guy wasn't. This guy wanted a secret agent who would make it into the halls of the uh, intelligence agencies of Australia. New guy says, so Trad Girl got trapped by a leftist stooge. Exactly. But there's nothing in the red pill that tells you Trad Girl is so powerful. The Trad lifestyle is so powerful, you can apply it to any man and he's going to love it. No. 
There are a bunch of men out there who don't want this. Make sure you don't marry them. Um, instead, between the lockdown claustrophobia and her husband's behavior, she began to revise her initial willingness to leave public life. So it was very important for him that she leave public life because for him, it meant he wouldn't get his security clearance as long as she was considered a white nationalist. Now, from my view, she should have said no to this. She, Lauren Sutton's public value is much more than a second-tier employee in some government agency in Australia. Lauren Sutton's public value is potentially millions of dollars in her life. You don't sacrifice your public life for a man who brings in a meager salary and who can just survive, and in fact, who needs her to work with him to make it. So here, bad decision, but again, is this a failure of the right-wing trad lifestyle? No. The right-wing trad lifestyle wouldn't even commend you to stop engaging in the public space. The right-wing trad lifestyle would simply have said, Put priority to your mother, to your work as a stay-at-home mother, and then you can continue to engage on Twitter, but just know that it's a secondary thing. He wanted her out of this line of work because he felt that he was getting slowly, slowly excluded from higher-tier positions because of it. So you've basically signed a contract with the devil, Lauren. You signed a marriage contract with the state. <clears throat> the state and the intelligence agencies of the state, which is one of the worst branch of it, they cannot have respect for what you do. And therefore, they used your husband to put pressure on your life. Basically, if this was a planned intelligence operation, I wouldn't be surprised at all. I'm not saying it is. But if I'm, if I'm a leftist head of an intelligence agency and I have, oh my God, one of my guys is in love with Lauren Sutton, the first thing I'm going to think is, is there a way I can shut her down through my guy? And you have to be careful because they, they've been pulling a lot of female interns in those agencies going for men, for public men like uh, Millennial Woes. Um, <clears throat> be careful. They can also pull it on a woman. So in any case, th this is not husbandly behavior, but it's a result of you choosing the wrong husband. Never mind the pop anti-feminist ideal of a breadwinning husband and homemaking wife that Saturn had once promoted, the freedoms won by early feminists for women to work and have interest outside the home turned out to be a lifeline. Those already inclined to dislike Saturn's politics might feel a certain vindictive satisfaction at this collision of ideology with reality, but arguably in having taken so long to see the potential downsides of our own anti-feminism, Saturn simply shared the same blind spots as much of the mainstream left and right. My problem with these old paragraphs is there is no sign that this guy wanted a trad wife. In fact, he gives all signs that he, he wanted her to be the opposite. Well, don't marry a man who wants the opposite of you. That's not advisable under the red pill philosophy. Then there's this whole story where they try to attribute the breakup of the relationship to the husband. They, they say, in the end, it wasn't Saturn who broke the spell, but her husband. Around the time her son was toddling, two family deaths prompted her to arrange a visit home to Canada. Her husband threatened to divorce her if she went, and Saturn tells me she had to sign an affidavit promising to return. Finally, he relented, only to text after she landed in Canada, declaring that because she had chosen to travel, the marriage was over. There's something amiss here. There's something wrong with this narrative. You're trying to tell me 
that I should consider that he broke up the relationship when she was on a plane with the child going to her country. I believe that what's happening here is that this man has imposed a condition on her and she couldn't do it. She went against his wishes. And so he tested her by... First, he saw that she wanted to go to Canada. Now, he started being extremely afraid of the potential that she would kidnap their child, that she would use the opportunity to cause an international divorce, and that he would never see his child again. He started habituating himself to this idea, and he started saying, look, if you do this, I don't want to be with you anymore. You're playing with my emotions. You are violating the covenant of living together that marriage is. And as someone was pointing out on Twitter, you know, he was a leftist and a statist, but maybe he was a chad. Maybe he was a, a kind of guy who can impose or wants to impose control over her. And she didn't, she didn't bend to, her contr- to his control. She said, I'm going to Canada with the kid no matter what. And then there was this deal of an affidavit promising to return. But he realized, if, if I don't control my wife so much that I need to have affidavit deals with her to ensure a return, is that really my wife? So I believe that he interpreted the whole thing as her divorcing, basically, as her um, going away from him and dropping him. And he was done with it. He was done with the with the weight that this had on his mind. And so to cleanly break, he said, all right, forget it. We're not together anymore. But to me, that is a wife going away from the home. Now, there might be justified cases for a wife to go away with, from the home. But in this case, you probably had an over-controlling leftist. New guy makes the right reading on this. He says, ah, she mistook the control for trad. Many such cases. The reality is trad people, like I consider myself an anarcho-primitivist of sort and a social conservative. I exert almost zero control over my girlfriend. She's right there uh, in the room beside. Sometimes I ask her, hey, can you do this? That would be great. Hey, uh, can can you do that? And that's because I'm busy doing other things. But there is nothing that I impose onto her. The red pill community and social conservatives are not controlling people. In fact, I'm a a radical libertarian. So the problem here is there's a bunch of leftist parasites who hear in on her, they get a voice because they get presented as social conservatives, but they're not social conservatives. What you had was an insecure male feminist. Lauren, this is who you married. This is who you have a child with. So your your half Filipino child that's currently in a trailer in Canada, in the forest somewhere, peeing in a dump, is the child of a feminist, of a controlling feminist. And these controlling feminists, you know, they get nervous, justifiably so, when you play around the theme of carrying children in planes, divorce maybe, Leaving the home, maybe, oh, but, but I'm signing an affidavit. They get freaking nervous. It's mentally taxing because they know the whole legal system is against them. So w- what I would bet happened is that there was so much trouble that she was causing in his life. This guy made the computation. Bringing her back here is ruining my life, ruining my mental health. I have to sometimes physically kick out of the house. I don't know why, but he knows why. He probably saw other opportunities of perhaps other females who were more in feminist, like working type of females, perhaps even a co-worker of his. And he decided, I'm going for these co-workers. I'm going to start, I'm going to switch toward another woman because she's giving me the opportunity 
She's extremely costly to me. She brings nothing to my life anymore. And I already have the baby with her. So these factors combined together, combined with the presume, presumably there was some sort of threat or abuse that led Lauren to be expelled from his home. The combined factors of all of this led this leftist, yes, uh, pathetic to some extent, yes, feminist to some extent, yes, but Lauren's husband to write to her, well, you know what, just stay in Canada because uh, I, I, can't, I can't take this disruption of my life anymore. All in all, this is what I take away from the article, but the article is written very differently from this. If you read the article, all that happened is, oh my God, Lauren Sutton got abused. She got in, a, in an abusive relationship with a social conservative, and he was an evil social conservative. But, but when you read between the lines, you realize, oh, well, he never asked her to be a trad wife. She, she took it on her to be a trad wife. She chose someone who didn't want a trad wife. She chose a man who was obsessed with her working. She had to work. So all in all, I see a very different article than the one that's written there. But I told you guys my perspective on the story. I don't have direct access to truth because I, I wasn't there. But I know how to extrapolate from what's not said. And what's not said here is, what were the wrongs of Lauren? What were the, what were the things that she did to him? What were the threats? Why was he so nervous? And ultimately, why did Lauren go for this guy when he was giving all of the signs that what he wanted was a different female than Lauren was ready to deliver? That is it for tonight, boys. Dino Logovic says, Jeff, not suggesting this is the case here, but this story from a decade ago, absolutely disgusting. Uh, <clears throat> undercover police had children with activists. Um, Disclosure likely to intensify controversy over a long-running operation to infiltrate and sabotage protest groups. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question, you know. My policy is inseminate the woman, even if you know she's CIA. Uh, my policy is this, and there are severe ethical considerations. In my case, it's because I'm always the victim of the CIA. I'm always... I'm always being targeted by these operations and these investigators. Uh, but in the other sense, there is, a, there is a severe moral issue here. If you're the police agent and you inseminate the person you're investigating, that's definitely a different game. In any case, keep inseminating. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice.